the believer is to resist the devil. Number two, James 4, 7, number two. The believers to fight the good fight of faith, 1 Timothy 6, 12. Number three, the believers to be filled with the word of God and set apart by it. John 17, 17, number four, the believer is to be constantly walking in the spirit as an outward garment because of an inward needle wrought work of God with the finished work. Number five, the believer is to fellowship with people in the light. First John 1, 7, in the light, in precise light, in precise love, in precise mercy, in precise convictions, in precise truth. Number six, the believer is to forgive as God forgives and love as God loves. Number seven, the believer is to have such intimate communion with God that God wants him to take him home but doesn't because he hasn't finished his work. But God so loves him because of intimacy. He wants to take him home just to be up there with him now because he longs for that believer to be with him in person. Uh, God needs to program us with the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, present, active, indicative, which is also in Christ Jesus. Continually let it be in you. Now here's what the Word of God is teaching us. That Satan's program process the purpose of it is to first get you away from the church, second, to get you away from do doctrine, third, to get you away from loving God, fourthly, to get you away from obedience to what you know is right, and next is to get you divorced in a divorce court and to split up your family. That's his program. He wants to steal your kids from you. He wants to steal your children from you. He wants to steal them and have them serve him. He wants to, to supply them with social provisions and natural provisions. He wants to supply them with a process of natural preservation. He wants your kids. He's going to make a bid for every child in this body. He wants it in the worst way. He'll use anybody he can to get it. And that's the way Satan is. But notice this. God's provision is this. In Isaiah 52, 2, is shake the dust off your feet. Now, what does that mean, off your body? What does that mean? Well, Psalm 119, 25 says, I cleave to the dust, quicken me so that I do not cleave to the dust. Quicken me so I don't cleave to the natural prevention and natural uh, provision rather and natural viewpoint. He said, I want you, Lord, to quicken me so I don't cleave to that natural cyclo and that night natural cycle. And, and the word of God says, okay, don't feed upon the dust because you're feeding on the natural man, on natural lifestyle, even though you may be good as far as overt sins go, don't do it. And don't feed on the air intellectually in Hosea 12, 2 and Ephesians 2 and 2. Now, the Word of God makes it crystal clear that therefore we are to shake off the dust. Now, say now, the prince of this world has been judged. He has nothing to do with me in 1430 of John. Now, the prince of this world has been judged judged. I don't want him to program me. I don't want him to program my people. I don't want him to program my family. He's been judged. He's a liar. I'm not going to accept it. He's a filthy, rotten father of lies. And supernaturally, he's not going to have my computer. And he's not going to have a right to program me. And I will not give him a place in his world system, though I'm in the world.